Right, so welcome back to the shop, and today we are going to start getting a bit more balls deep into the dynamics and the kinematics and the ge geometry and so on and so on of engine and how engines convert um, basically combusting a fuel air mixture and basically turning it into torque because that's basically all we care about. And um, if you produce torque really, really quickly and uh, repeatably then you produce power and more power and more power and the more re reliably and repeatably and faster you can make this torque um, the more power you have. Any road. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how uh, force applied to a piston transfers through a rod into a crankshaft. And let me move that because I want to put my foot on there because it feels natural. <laughs> That's better, it just so it means it turns my body this way a bit. Anyway, <laughs> you don't need to know that. So basically in this system, um, when we look at this as a um, mechanical system. Right then, so our number one state is TDC. And when we look at that, we've got our small end. Writing that backwards like an idiot. A small end, our rod, and then we have our crank pin there. And then we have down here our rotational sensor. So this is our axis axis, <laughs> that's our rotational axis, that bloody pen pops miles away, bring that over here, there we go, so you can see that we have um, one, two, three points there, like this, so you see one, two, three points, you obviously can't see our crank sensor, but our crank sensor is about there, and I should really put that on, that would be a clever thing to do, tell you what, let's just dot it, because I believe it is there, there like that, so we've got three points, that one, that one, and that one. So, all is good. And you can see that this basically makes up a straight line, let me just move this so I can actually access some of the board. Whoa, fucking hell, that's bottom dead centre. <laughs> um, so you can see we have a straight line, and then when we have bottom dead centre, let me get the black pen, that probably shows up better, we've got... Um, Small end, rod, we've got crank pin, and then we've got our axis there, our rotational axis. I keep on writing things backwards, I don't know why. And then this is at TDC, so that's TDC. And then here we have our rotational axis, we have our crank pin, and then we have our small end. So small end, crank pin, and that's our axis, our rotational axis. Might as well put an R in there for rotational axis. Like so. And as you can see, it's basically another straight line. And then if we go through the motions of this whole thing, so let's just say we go from TDC and we go to 45 degrees. Now we can see we have this point here, this point here, and this point here, and that's making a triangle. And then we go to 90 degrees. Again, we've got another triangle there. Go to 135. We've now got another triangle. And then we go back down to zero. So what does this mean? Um, torque has to be applied around a pivotal centre. So we'll use this tape as an example. There's a roll of tape. And torque has to be applied like this. You might see drawings like this of a spanner and a nut and force being applied. What that doesn't allude to and what... It, it makes clear, but it doesn't make clear, is that that's peak torque. When you're um, a line from the outside, so where your force is being applied to your rotational centre, and then your force being applied to that, when they are perpendicular, when they are at 90 degrees, that's peak torque. However, when we're at TDC like this, we're just pushing down. The force is going through the rod, and it's pushing the crankshaft down. When we are like this, and we apply force here, it goes straight down the rod, and it's literally kind of almost pulling the crankshaft in. So what does that mean? It means that at TDC and BDC, I didn't put BDC on there, um, BDC, the torque is zero, right? In regards to this system as in force coming from within the cylinder, um, which is pressure. But, um, yes, this equals zero. So basically we go from zero to zero. So what happens is, is if we plot this out on a graph, and I know you're thinking, oh, the dreaded graphs, we have 0 degrees there, 90 degrees there, this is crank angle, and 180 there. 
if we look at this graph and this torque, if we have constant force, it looks like this, right? Which you'd kind of expect. Why would we expect this? Well, because it's just like with a, a spanner. Let me get the spanner out. You've got a spanner like this, and if your nut was there at the bottom and you pushed straight down, because you've got to remember our force is coming from the same direction, you push straight down, you're just pushing down. If you come out here and you push down, you get a bit of torque, you come down to here like this and then you can really, really twist. This is what you do with breaker bars, you know, stuff like that. You try and get perpendicular to the amount of force, and that's what you see these guys who have never touched a spanner in their life, they start doing weird things like that. But anyway, um, so you can see that our peak torque, so our PT there, is at 90 degrees, which you'd kind of expect because we're coming in at an angle. The fact of the matter is, is this isn't, and this is with constant force. One of our problems is, is that this isn't constant force. You might have peak uh, pressure in your cylinder at, say, 30 degrees, something like that. And then as you sweep down, this volume is increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing, which means the pressure drops. If we look back to the simple P, uh, PTV like this, um, volume and pressure are um, inversely proportional. So as the volume increases, the pressure drops. And the pressure is what is pushing down the piston. That's the force applied to the piston. Or if you're Dave Macaroni, the presser. But what happens if the torque, um, the force applied is realistic. So if we started off up here at a thousand newtons of force and then when by the time we push it down to here it drops pretty much to zero, you know we've got this, this linear sliding scale of, of the force just dropping off. It's not linear and yes blah 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 but we'll, like I say we'll get there. Um, if you look at how that falls off what you do is your torque curve will change and it'll change like this oh, that's, the, that's the right pen pot, there we go so your torque shifts across and if we actually look, I'll put some proper graphs up if we actually look, this is more at like at 70 degrees and the reason why is because we have this 90 degree force applied to this con rod here but not only that is, this is when we are at um, perpendicularity, so this line and this line are in line. That's where peak torque comes from when your, your force is applied perpendicular to your lever. And um, not only that, is our cylinder space here is quite small. If you come out to 90 degrees like this, 90 degree crank angle, our volume is bigger, which means our pressure is dropped. And you'll see I've put these dotted lines on here. And basically, that there is 90 degrees, so when our little arrow lines up with our uh, crank pin like that, that's 90 degrees. This is when this rod is perpendicular to our crank axis, uh, the, the, the line running from our crank axis outwards to where our force is applied. So there is where the maximum torque can be created, um, just from a, ge a geometric point of view. And then if you see, I put these lines on here. So basically, if your combustion basically reaches peak torque there and sweeps through this 45 degrees here, this is where you make most of your torque. So it's basically this bit right in the middle here. So it's just a bit below halfway and it's just a, well, a lot more above that. But this is where our volume is the smallest and we get the most mechanical leverage the, most, the biggest mechanical advantage of levering this around. Now, um, basically what you can do is, what you can see on this graph is, as you pass um, like 135 degrees and stuff, the torque has just fucked off, it's just absolutely disappeared. There's bugger all there, and that's because our volume doesn't really change that much, and we're basically, we're getting closer and closer just to pushing straight down. So, this is one of the reasons why two strokes can kind of get away with having their ports open at like 60, uh, 60 degrees away from bottom dead centre. So if you go 60 degrees away from bottom dead centre, you're about 120 degrees. 120 degrees, let's say 90, is about there. And if you 
look at these graphs, 120 degrees, oh, fucking hell, 120 degrees is, that's really when the torque's starting to drop off, so that's when we can start to open ports, get rid of the exhaust gases, flood more stuff in, stuff like this. This is also the reason why two-stroke um, diesels with ports that are basically at the bottom of the cylinder down here, this is why they're so efficient, because most of your torque is up here, that's where you generate most of your torque, when you get down here, there's not... Even if the pressures are quite high, you've lost your, your, your leverage, your leverage, your leverage, your leverage, whichever one you want to say. Um, you've lost most of it. Literally, it's fuck all there. So that's when they can open up these ports and just, you know, open the exhaust valves and then just basically purge the cylinder with air. Because even though you are shitting out your, um, you know, your combustion process gases, it doesn't really matter because there's not much to basically get from that because you've lost your mechanical advantage down here. It's, it's nothing. You can see that the volume's not really increasing that much and you don't get really any torque here whatsoever. Next thing we're going to look at is we're going to have a look at velocities of pistons, peak velocities, stuff like that. We're also going to look at um, accelerations and what that means, what that means for balance and the mismatch that I was talking about that pistons accelerate faster this half than they do this half and what that actually means what can we do or the problems with trying to balance pistons that way any road hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit and i just dropped that awesome <laughs>